हेलो एंड वेलकम एनालिटिकल टेस्ट प्रोसीजर और मेथड ऑफ एनालिसिस इज वन ऑफ द क्रूशियल डॉक्यूमेंट इन साइड द डी एम एफ और ए एन डी ए एप्लीकेशन एंड यू एस एफ डी हैज गिवन न्यूमरस गाइडलाइंस ऑन हाउ वन कैन प्रिपेयर द मेथड ऑफ एनालिसिस बट स्टिल देर आर फ्यू कॉमन एरर्स एप्लीकेंट्स आर डूइंग and in today's talk we are going to understand you know how we can improvise on to the quality of our analytical test procedure as far as liquid chromatography or gas chromatography is concerned so let us understand what are those easily correctable common issues related to liquid chromatography and gas chromatography methods in drug master file or nda application so these are the nine important points so let me zoom in a little so that you will be able to see the screen okay so what is the point number 1 and here it is so just referencing a compendial method without providing a description of analytical procedure is not going to suffice requirement you cannot say for assay of xyz product refer usp monograph so and so you need to also provide the details required so that the chemist or analyst can able to perform the analysis and she or she did not to refer the usp monograph we know that the mobile phase preparation like standard sample preparation chromatographic conditions or acceptance criteria for system suitability calculation details your reference blank standard sample chromatograms are very critical information so this information can be included into the method of analysis so just giving a reference to compendia is not a good idea the second important point is no information regarding name of manufacturer and brand name of analytical column see usp might have given the usage of l1 stationary phase but we all know that you know in l1 category you will find thousands of the column manufacturers and the problem is in case of liquid chromatography the performance of the column will vary from one manufacturer to another so how one can understand that you know what is the exact column required so it is very important not to just mention about the c18 column or l1 stationary phase to be used but also mention the details about the manufacturer and the column brand name because the different manufacturer brand name of the column can have the different peak order they may differ into the peak shape or your resolution can be different or sometimes even selectivity also can get changed so to avoid all these circumstances you need to better mention the column brand name manufacturer's name into the method of analysis the third important point is the system suitability not being demonstrated throughout a whole analytical run see it is been mentioned into the uh, usp general chapter you know for chromatography which is 621 that you need to demonstrate system suitability not only at the beginning of run but throughout your entire analytical run so what this indicates you need to inject the standard solutions after suitable number of stage sample solutions and confirm that yes my system is still meeting the system suitability requirement so in case if you are missing out on this important point you can take action on to it so the injection used to establish system suitability at the beginning of run also must be reinjected after the last injection of test sample and also after suitable frequency throughout the entire sequence this is also called as the bracketing standard phenomenon missing uh, sorry the misusing ppm while it actually microgram per ml i mean it's very habitual to all of us you know that we just use ppm as a synonym for microgram per ml but these two are two different units so rather than using ppm you must start following using microgram per ml i am also very much habituated to use ppm but now after understanding this one common error you know 
I really think that I must change this habit and start using microgram per ml rather than ppm. No caution statement in the method when special sample handling is needed. See, all your sample solutions are not equally stable. All your chromatographic systems are, are not robust across all the parameters studied. Right? There may be situation wherein your sample standard solutions are not stable beyond certain time period. Or there may be some situation where your drug substance is highly, highly hygroscopic and you need to take a utmost precaution during weighing of it. You may require to maintain the humidity, let us say, not more than 60%. So those details are very crucial as far as your accuracy of the data is concerned. So mention all those details into the analytical test procedure that yes, while measuring this particular substance, you need to maintain the humidity, it is not more than 60% RH. Some drug substances are not stable when they go into a solution. So a standard and sample solution is having some limited stability. Please do mention about the usage period after their preparation. The next one is no reporting or discarding threshold stated in the impurity methods. Now it is also very important to understand about which I must start you know, reporting the result. And for this, uh, to identify the reporting or discarding threshold, you can refer ICH guideline Q3A or Q3B. So clearly mention what is the limit of quantitation of your method, what is the detection limit of your method so that the analyst will get the clear indications, clear guidance on to the integration of the impurity peaks. So in case if you are also missing out this very important information, start including the information about your discard peak that below which, for example, below 0.05% all impurity peaks can be discarded. The next point is multiple sample preparations or multiple injections of the sample solutions without predefined acceptance criteria. Now in some cases it has been observed that the method of analysis mentions about the duplicate sample injection for an assay and there is no harm in doing that. But the concern is do you have a suitable criteria, I mean the acceptance criteria to accept those two injections result? Do you have any clear cut uh, predefined acceptance criteria? Maybe in case of difference between the two assay results, for example, should not be more than 2%. So in case if you are following these multiple injections, multiple preparations for your sample solutions, do mention what is the predefined acceptance criteria so that the results can be accepted or results can be, you know, uh, invalidated. Inadequate system suitability acceptance criteria. Percent RSG for replicate standard injection for assay not as per USP general chapter 621. So USP general chapter 621 talks about how you can set the system suitability acceptance criteria or for percent RSD for standard replicate injections based on to its uh, assay higher limit and the number of replicate injections. So it's very important to set the acceptance criteria for percent RSD in line with your 621 general chapter which is given into the USP and it has been also seen that you know high variation is possible due to issues in pump column detector etc and may invalidate results generated. So setting a suitable percent RSD for replicate standard injection is very much needed and required. So refer USP general chapter 621 and based on to your upper assay limit and number of replicate of standard injections you will be able to identify the percent RSD in your case. No demonstration of the system sensitivity while performing related substances and residual solvents analysis. Now these are the two tests which are trying to you know quantify the trace level element, trace level impurities. 
or components but do you have any injections made which will confirm that your method i mean your system maybe hplc or gas chromatography system is enough sensitive to quantify those uh, content at the required uh, sensitivity level and in case if there is absence of such injections then you need to think about having a solution which can confirm that yes my system is sensitive it can be about injecting the uh, sample solutions at the texture level or injecting a sample solution at uh, quantification level and measuring the signal to noise ratio to justify yes my system is sensitive enough to use for this analysis the second important point is no or inadequate resolution criteria for closely eluting peaks see resolution is very important in case if you want to accurately integrate two peaks so the base to base separation is always preferred but in case if there is a poor separation now how much is the allowable separation possible and those details must be included into your system suitability criteria the next one is no peak tailing acceptance criteria especially using isocratic mode so it is also been important to have the suitable acceptance criteria for the peak tailing you can think of you know having the tailing between 0.8 to 1.5 but there must be presence of the acceptance criteria for tailing especially for isocratic mode because the peak broadening and tailing is more severe with the isocratic run system suitability acceptance criteria not justified by validation data so whatever you propose your acceptance criteria for system suitability must also be justified by your validation data and it has been found that you know you the applicant it has been found that the applicant tend to set the relaxed system suitability criteria even though observed system suitability values in validation indicates it can be much tighter suppose if you propose percent rsd for related substances at not more than 10% for six replicate injections but during throughout the validation it has been found that it is less than 5% so those details are also needs to be considered while setting the system suitability acceptance criteria post completion of the validation and here is the last point easily correctable issues related to analytical procedures now so what are the issues which are very easily correctable as per as analytical test procedure and here is the first one using the chromatographic purity of drug substance as the potency of the drug substance standard so there is subtle difference between purity of the drug substance and the potency so do not use purity or chromatographic purity of drug substance as a potency of your drug substance so have the suitable uh, uh, sop to calculate the potency and according to that sop you need to calculate the potency exceeding the validated range when modifying the chromatographic conditions of a compendial or validated method so you need to understand what is the boundary you know the range of my methods variations my method is robust between ph plus or minus 0.2 my method is robust between the organic variations of plus or minus 5% so i am allowed to make the changes in between these studied ranges but if i start you know varying exceeding these changes exceeding these parameters beyond my robust range proven then this is not acceptable so in case if you are in the process of exceeding the range of your chromatographic conditions do consider your robustness study using a different column when adopting a compendial method without demonstrating column equivalency so column equivalency is very much important in case if you want to use the equivalence column without proving the column equivalency you cannot do that so different brands of columns even from same company can perform dramatically different and so you are talking about the different columns so it's very important to prove that whatever proposed column you have 
is equally good in performance with the old column. Performing robustness on proposed column is suggested. So these are the important points and I'm sure that this all nine points uh, are really very easily correctable when it comes to the liquid chromatography, I mean HPLC method or the gas chromatography method. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'm sure that you must have got some highlight on to uh, taking precautions while preparation of your STPs while designing your applications for DMF and ANDA. Thank you and good luck. Bye-bye.